All right, we are in the last session before lunch. Um, this one is on marketing tactics that maximize results. My name is Eric Cosway from Quantum Digital. I'm the EVP CMO, and it's my honor to host these smart people through this session. Uh, we have Tony Nelson on my far right. Tony is the Director of Strategic Initiatives for Prudential Gary Green. In the middle, who will be going second is Chip Newman. He's a partner, obviously, of Newman Real Estate. And uh, directly on my right is Bev Thorne. Bev is the Chief Marketing Officer for Century 21 Real Estate. How this is going to work, um, each individual has a slide presentation of approximately 15 minutes. We will do Q&A the same way through the texting. We'll be able to see the questions here or up on the screen. And we'll invite questions uh, as they come, come along. Or if it works out, we'll do it at the, in the last 15 minutes, either or. You guys flexible? Take questions along, or would you rather do them at the end? Take questions whenever. Yeah, we'll take questions whenever. Okay. So, Tony, I'm going to kick it off, to, off uh, for you. This is marketing tactics that maximize results. Okay. Thank you very much. And I just want to say some of these uh, topics that we've been talking about have just really been outstanding. And uh, uh, my particular one is uh, direct mail. It's the link to everything online. I wanted to give you some quick facts about our our company. We're a listing company. We got started in uh, 1963. And uh, Gary Green, he had a philosophy that uh, has lived on uh, since that time. And that was, uh, you know, uh, you want to you control the listings, you want to get the listings. Uh, we have uh, 25 offices, uh, 17 that are company owned. Uh, and uh, eight affiliates, and we have approximately a thousand agents. And then in 2010, uh, we listed more homes, we uh, sold more homes, and we closed more transactions than any other company in Houston. And this year, we widened that gap uh, in terms of taking listings. And currently, we have 35% more listings than the next highest broker. And of course, in a metropolitan uh, area that covers 10,000 square uh, miles, uh, capturing that hyper-local market that we have talked about earlier uh, is imperative to our success. And when we talk about hyper-local, I always like the one uh, in uh, Wikipedia, and that is just a well-defined community-scale area uh, with primary focus directed uh, towards the concerns of its residents. And so um, one of the things when you uh, go out and you ask our agents uh, when it comes to direct mail, what is the one thing? Thing, uh, that they like, and it's the quantum digital uh, demographic selection management tool that they have so they can target because we are big uh, uh, geographic niche marketers. Uh, they're they're uh, really hot on that. But uh, you can also, uh, just to uh, break it down, in, in uh, 2010 in, in the Houston area, there was 21,633 single family rentals, uh, which is up 13% uh, from 2009. And of course, the average single uh, family uh, retail uh, rental uh, price was $1,472, and obviously there's uh, clearly home buying uh, uh, potential in that particular market for us. Well, uh, agents marketing uh, to, to con convert tenants to homeowners, uh, they can use the uh, demographic selection tool uh, in uh, Quantum Digital to reach that market uh, directly. And of course, agents that uh, want to market directly to homeowners would use that tool to eliminate uh, those uh, that do rent. So it's been a great tool uh, to sort of a rifle, a, shot, a, sh a target right at, at your target as opposed to a shotgun. On the trigger marketing, that has been singularly uh, the most successful direct mail venture in 2010 that we've had. Uh, we ordered 18,370 postcards versus 12,203 in 2009, and that's a 50% increase due primarily to uh, the trigger marketing program. Uh, it's mainly, it's easy, it's convenient, it's automatic for the agent, and it's hyper-local. Of course, uh, just 
listed showing the success that the agent has had uh, in the neighborhood uh, and notifying them that who's active there. Uh, the uh, company, our company, participates uh, when the agents order in that, and so they always uh, want to take advantage of those uh, uh, little uh, benefits. And of course, it, it, it expands uh, direct mail uh, beyond print with a URL uh, to more information online. Uh, you may or may not be familiar with it, but the recipient is directed to a web page, uh, and uh, this this uh, gives them the ability for a lot more uh, interactiveness. They can uh, view uh, house photos. They can learn more about the property. They can fill out a questionnaire. Uh, they can just get more involved, more interactive with the process than they could with just a just a uh, postcard. Uh, the agent also receives feedback, which gives them, uh, uh, you know, some return, uh, some information about the return on their investment. Uh, it's a two-tiered notification program, and it notifies them a if somebody went up there and looked online, maybe didn't didn't uh, uh, leave any information uh, to get back in contact with them, and then they also get information if somebody uh, left uh, notice for them to contact them one way or the other. So. Uh, it really opened up uh, a, a big door in direct ma mail when it sends it to uh, a, an area that uh, not only do they get, uh, they can get feedback uh, and uh, uh, it provides the uh, homeowner or the seller, where, whoever your, your recipient is, much more information than what you would get on a, a postcard. And of course, uh, the key benefits are it's quick and it's easy, automated system uh, for agents. Uh, our agents absolutely love the system, and in fact, when we first set it up, I believe it started in March. Uh, they were upset if they were not getting uh, notification, uh, and that's the first time we've ever, you know, usually if we ask them, you want to send out just listed postcards, you know, it's like, you know, do I have to uh, type thing, but now, uh, you know, if they don't get an email, we have to certainly check out and find out why why they didn't and, and get uh, back to them. Uh, two clicks and they're done, and of course we pay for the first $22 uh, on that, and they can measure uh, the effectiveness and the contact uh, uh, respondents. Um, it also expands direct mail. I, I, uh, that's my, my favorite thing uh, beyond the printed word. Uh, platform for more information for the consumer uh, and a lead capture program for the agents. Uh, but uh, some of the things that we have talked about earlier, I see some changes that will impact direct mail, uh, and we've talked about the mobile re revolution, and I think that it will continue to grow uh, in uh, 2011, and of course the smartphone phenomena is uh, number one uh, impact. The sites optimized uh, for mobile uh, is uh, going to be another necessity, and then of course the QR codes uh, are growing and building uh, uh, some, some uh, uh, scale uh, in that area. Uh, the smartphone phenomena, the mobile search is expected to uh, surpass PC uh, search within four years, and I agree. Uh, it'll, it'll, it's going to come a lot quicker and faster than most people anticipate. iPhone, uh, Android, uh, uh, they account for 85% of the mobile web traffic. Uh, 2011 mobile phones will surpass uh, landlines, and then 85% of, of of, uh, phones manufactured this year will be smartphones. So uh, mobile web usage is second only to text messaging. You probably know yourself you have one. Uh, where, you know, first thing you do is text message. Second thing you do the most is, is uh, uh, search online. So um, uh, my smartphone is with me. Uh, when I open up my mail or I read uh, my magazine, uh, and I'm, I'm more likely to search uh, for more info on my cell uh, than my desktop or, or laptop or, or uh, even uh, uh, iPad, you know. Um, uh, I think it's going to lead uh, to more uh, lead conversion, depending on what type of experience, and we've uh, talked about this before, uh, optimizing your site, and the difference on the left, you can see a, web a website that's not been optimized for mobile. Uh, it's uh, uh, unreadable at first, and you have to kind of, it's, it's just not a good experience. You, it's hard to navigate around, and then as you see on the right, uh, it's navigating, it was built specifically into 
designed for uh, mobile, uh, and the experience is totally and completely different. And uh, when we we uh, uh, design things like QR codes and that sort of thing, we have to be very careful that our agents are sending, uh, uh, our, you know, their uh, target market, they're sending them to something that is a good experience for the consumer. And of course, we have to optimize our, our website for most uh, mobile. I know a lot of them are iPhone uh, 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 optimized, but not all of them have taken into account all of the other iPhones, uh, I mean, all the other smartphones that are available in the market. And of course, the third phenomenon is uh, QR codes. It's uh, known as a digital bridge, and we all know it's a two dimensional uh, barcode. You get instant experience, scannable by all smartphones. It's used by Google, Nike, Starbucks, McDonald's, HBO, uh, Calvin Klein, and uh, of course Best Buy is doing a YouTube uh, uh, national training uh, for anyone that happens by about uh, the value of it and how quickly uh, your smartphone can get to more information of wherever. It's taken over uh, tremendously in Houston, uh, but again Again, my concern was were they sending uh, uh, them to a website that had uh, virtual tours that were made in flash and so that's a very bad experience for a smartphone because they can't tell uh, the flash and so uh, we uh, in December we adopted a platform tour uh, t-o-o-r dot me uh, and it generates virtual uh, tours that are optimized uh, specifically for mobile but also it looks very good on your desktop your iPad and uh, all the others. Uh, it generates a QR code for yard signs and downloads flyers. Uh, Google Maps are built in uh, to capture uh, the information in the hyper-local market, which is what everybody wants to know if you're looking at uh, a listing, what's around it, uh, you know, schools, uh, neighborhood, uh, neighborhood uh, activities and that sort of thing, uh, parks, what have you. And then, of course, uh, they can share it on Facebook, LinkedIn, and uh, your social media. And the listing agent is a single point of contact, which is very similar to... Uh, the trigger marketing program. And the results is um, uh, basically I get a, a, a email a day uh, from an agent saying that they, they use a QR code to get a listing. That's that's the number one thing is, is uh, I've never heard of so many listings in December to this point that I drove here for the conference, uh, uh, the benefit of that. Uh, there's just an example of an e-card that uh, we developed uh, reaching more buyers by going mobile. In fact, there's 900 million uh, mobile people. So anyway, uh, a change in technology changes your print needs. And so uh, we had to redevelop our entire uh, flyer program to enable a download and to display a QR code uh, and just listed postcards. We would like to see a QR code uh, to be able to uh, lead to trigger marketing or a QR QR code uploadability uh, mainly for all print. And so in, in, in uh, c conclusion, uh, home sellers that uh, knew nothing, which was amazing to me, about uh, QR codes were sold on the innovation that was offered uh, by our agents on this, on this uh, program. And uh, this will be the year of growth again in smartphones. I think uh, we all need to go out and optimize our uh, websites, QR codes, and the integration of uh, direct mail to expand in the hyperlocal market. Uh, and I also think that direct mail will continue to be a link to everything online. Thank you. Those are, this session is about tactics, so there's a great number of best practices shared there. Thanks, Tony. Thank you. Um, Chip, let me pass it to you. Wow, that was a lot of information. <laughs> Anyways, it's a pleasure being here. I feel like a little puppy dog. Being from an office of um, just, just two offices, 25 agents, I'm part of a family business. I have four brothers and sisters that are my partners. My dad started it back with Pam when it was Pam Johnson, back at All Points Relocation back in 1969 we started. and. Um, I am thrilled to be here and I'm thrilled to work with Quantum. My topic was to talk about was more print, more of the basic stuff that I still think you can't get away from, the power and the, the visual look of doing quality pieces no matter what it is. Uh, my, my, I, I, I worked with Express Copy for years and uh, liked them but they weren't customizable. They weren't doing the things that I wanted. 
And uh, I wanted things done with class. I wanted them done quick. I wanted them to be done with great value and high quality. And I kept going to meetings. I, I brainstorm each year. I've been fortunate to be involved with Howard Britton for many years. He, he uh, uh, interviewed me back in 1991 in his star power. And, and then Bill Barrett bringing people together. And I guess I have to remind you, I'm an owner, I'm a partner. But being in a small company and knowing the profit margin of just having four or five family members being the uh, uh, at the lead and not selling is impossible. So I sell every day too, so I, I do wear two hats. Uh, but but, but I, I, I went to these meetings and I started hearing about quantum later and then I wasn't happy and brainstorming with where I was and uh, went to your booth, uh, met you Debbie years ago and uh, just, just it was an it's my pleasure, it's attitude, which uh, I like to think uh, I have a great team and you're part of my team. Uh, with that, We've done a number of things. I, I think I only have about three slides or something that we put down, but uh, I don't know what's first, second, or third with the slides, but, uh, uh, oh, okay, thank you. Um, I use quantum for many, many things. Uh, this is just a piece, I, uh, listing strategies by I. I. When I say I, I mean our office also. Our agents are on board. They get it. We've got high quality agents. Their volumes are much higher per agent than the average agency out there. Many, many more units, the whole bit. Uh, I like to brainstorm. I like to go out of the box and come up with listing strategies where we could tie in quantum to come up with a piece uh, to help sell the home or to help retain the listing. Uh, in this case, we put a holiday getaway together with some clients of ours who had connections in New York, who had connections to do various things there that I have the seller pay for and had these guys put the piece together. And sure, sometimes we do this in a Django mail format or something and mail it out, but I, we, in this case, we had a wine and cheese the whole bit, brought in some music, high-end house, and gave away these to all the agents. These guys did a great job. Uh, here's another one. This was a wine and cheese at a pretty prominent home, uh, which we get out to the agents. These guys, you know, my marketing guy's pretty good at putting a few things together. Actually, this is my assistant, Kathy, that does, does a number of these. Uh, and these guys, they come through. You come through with beautiful pieces. We have samples, I think, of some of these here, and I brought a few extra things also. Uh, brochures. The brochures that these guys continue to do for me are incredible. And what I find amazing is, uh, I can order one, two, 20 of them, 50 of them, 100 of them. Uh, and the cost for a small amount of pieces is amazing. I'll typically order in the beginning 20, 30 pieces because naturally we'll make mistakes in the beginning and need to reorder a few days later after the consumer sees it. Uh, but you guys do beautiful work with stuff like that. Uh, this was just, again, uh, strategies to help sell a home. A buddy of mine, is um, he's one of the doctors for the New York Yankees, so he has great seats in front. He can get, uh, we, we did a bonus for the agent uh, where he could get them uh, to be with the broadcasters for an inning and talk on, talk on TV about what it's like being, you know, with the, uh, being, uh, rooting for the Yankees, get them to the dugout, have autographs, this and that. But these guys put pieces together, and we set this up uh, not only to give in hard copy, but as PDFs where we mail them out every few weeks if something doesn't sell many of these pieces. Um, Dear friend of mine in Dayton, Ohio, Phil Herman, who I have a great deal of respect for over the years, he taught me, A, to do things with class and image as everything. Well, part of that image needs to be with a partner like Quantum. I went to Debbie and I said, look, Debbie, I need to put a piece together for myself and then for the office where I could have a large piece that, A, I could try to compete with um, the Weikerts of the world or people like that where we, we don't have the resources out there like some of these other companies, but sure, I can put pieces together that are, are high quality uh, and, and we can do it. So these guys put together, and I'll leave these, these nice 32-page uh, pamphlets that we use in our listing presentations uh, and leave. And quite honestly, we're re-engineering everything. Uh, we're proud to be uh, part of leading real estate of the, uh, companies of the world, but we also did, I think, a great strategy for us was to affiliate with Christie's this past year. We see them going uh, great places, and we're very excited about what they're doing. So we're, we're totally rebranding. It was the perfect time to even though we've been in our we've been in our marketplace since 1969, you know, number one, if not number two, for every year, uh, and so we're changing our colors, spending a lot of time changing specific looks. Uh, this is changing. You guys are printing this next week, and it's so nice to have a partner that gets it 
and, and not only gets it, wants to work with you, and they're creative, and they go out of the box and come up with some ideas. So um, we're, we're, we're thrilled to work with you guys. We do, we do as an office, um, movies. Uh, we, we, I'm very involved uh, civically in our playhouse, uh, and we use the, the Playhouse every few months and invite to everyone's clients to come see movies. We tend to pick old movies like E.T. where you can't really just see it anymore. The kids, you know, good quality family values. Uh, these guys print this stuff and then our agents use it. To me, stuff like that, forget splits. And yeah, it's a pain in the ass, the splits out there, what they always look for. But I think if you come up with ideas like this, uh, you know, things to do for your agents to get it out to their clients. This is worth a lot more than giving them an extra bonus or something else. Um, we come up with market pieces that our agents use where they do, you know, marketing reports to their various neighborhoods. And we help the agents, uh, you know, they have the data. It's so easy to pull up the quarterly data or the, or the semi-yearly data. And these guys print it for us and get it out. Uh, this type of stuff, it's back to, we talked earlier about the back to basics. To me, that's what it's all about, uh, reaching out to your consumers and doing things of high quality, uh, consumer oriented, at giving them items of value uh, that they want. And it, it, boy, I listened so closely this morning about uh, coming up with um, statistics and finding out more about your, your client base, who are they and who needs to move, and that is a key thing. But I also think a key thing is, is, is giving them stuff they want right now. And uh, I, I'm just honored to have these guys as a partner, and I'm, I'm privileged to be here. Thanks, Chip. I, I think you've given me a big headache. I think that uh, Debbie's going to be knocking on my door for a big race. <laughs> <laughs> Debbie, uh, maybe. <laughs> All right, thanks, Chip. Um, next, I'll pass it over to Beth. Debbie, did you want me to let Chip have some more time then yeah. <laughs> to help you out there? Well, um, thanks. I am Bev Thorne, the Chief Marketing Officer for Century 21, and it's fascinating for me to be here because there are so many different perspectives and different challenges that you deal with every day than I do. Um, I almost feel like the story that I'm going to share with you is a little bit old, but uh, let me run you through it nonetheless. In uh, early 2009, we made the decision to go digital, call it digital, call it online, call it interactive, etc. What it was, though, was really a big step for Century 21 to leave the classic, you know, TV commercial broadcast world, if you will. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to share with you a few insights about that and some things that we've done. Within the system, it was very controversial. It was actually not controversial externally because so many people saw what many of you saw and that we saw, and that was, you know, the reality is that TV is a fabulous medium if you're trying to build brand awareness. We sit in the enviable position of having 97% brand awareness. When, when you say Century 21, you don't have to say real estate to a consumer. They already know. Now, there are a few people in Central New Jersey who think about the department store, which uh, actually preceded the real estate company, as I now understand it. But um, other than that, um, you know, it's a huge advantage to have such an iconic brand. It just didn't make sense for us anymore to spend our dollars and our marketing power trying to build brand awareness, because what was really clear was what all of you know today. And that is that you know upwards of 90% of consumers were doing their buying and their shopping and being influenced by online activity. And with the ability for online interactive um, technology to be very targeted, we, it just didn't make sense for us to be in a uh, diffuse medium. So um, we did make the move. Um, we tested a lot in 2008. Uh, and empirically, I can tell you that there was just no question on the decision. However, the reality is that when you're dealing with a system that had, at the time, over 121,000 sales professionals who see Remax all the time on TV, guess what their perspective and response was? Wasn't a terribly popular decision internally. And in fact, if I hearken back to the history of Century 21, I will tell you that the, the system takes great pride in having been the first franchised real estate brand and the first brand to really go big time on TV. And so it's a very sweet and easy story to say, well, you know, we embraced that new technology back then, we're embracing new technology now. Well, they didn't quite receive it nearly as well. 
the reality is, though, let me tell you about some of the numbers. Um, we had tested a lot in 2008. In 2009, when we shifted our investment mix, what we did was we increased the leads that we generated to our franchisees by over 65% and we decreased the cost per lead by 50%. Now, some of you might recall that in the early uh, 2000s, Century 21 was a big sponsor of some Major League Baseball um, programs, particularly the Home Run Derby. It was a fabulous program. You have any idea the kind of leads that we generated from that advertising in that program? Ah, big zero. You know what, to be fair, I think we probably got a good 20 or 30. I mean, really, you know? Um, that cost per lead, exceptionally high, needless to say. Uh, and so it won't surprise you to know that when we delivered 65% more leads year over year from 2008 to 2009, our stronger brokers embraced it big time. And it was interesting hearing you talk earlier this morning. You know, there are brokers and agents in the system, in the industry, that probably should not be. Um, we, we have fun sometimes talking about the fact that many of our brokers bought a job, if you will, because the market was so good, it was so appropriate. But when you talk about business management and really growing a business, they were more interested in that emotional bond that they had with TV commercials versus stimulating business. When we moved from 2009 into 2010, I think I actually should probably be moving on to the next, next slide here. Um, um, our success continued. We actually um, followed that year with another increase in our lead volume by over 40%, and we dropped again our lead, our cost per lead by about 35%. In, I'm sorry, in 2010, we finished the year with over a 50% increase in the number of leads that we generated for the system year over year because we found out how to partner with technology partners, although we, like you, Carrie, don't like to say that to our, our agents. That's a dirty word. It's a new way of marketing. It's not technology. But the reality is you can do things online with behavioral targeting, and you can be very, very focused. It's not, a, not only geo-targeting, but behavioral targeting. And we can deliver far higher quality leads at a far lower price than we were able to do even six months earlier, never mind what we were able to do with TV. But at the end of the day, I can give you all the statistics I want to tell you how fabulously more efficient and effective that advertising was. But you can't miss the reality of a system that feels an emotional bond with its own brand and loves to see itself on TV and loves to contrast itself particularly to major competitors like a Remax. Now, of course, they don't want to talk about the fact that Redfin has had fabulous success and they're not on TV. Oh, no, no, they're not, they're not an example then. Um, or other brands like that. Keller Williams has not been on TV, so we don't talk about them in that space. But it is important to feel that link and that bond. So a very appropriate fill-in for us was everything that those of you know today, and that is the social media community and embracing those techniques and that kind of visibility. So, you know, utilizing Facebook and Twitter and Foursquare, et cetera, in addition to, you know, the pre-roll video and being present when people are watching TV. Because, you know, think about it. How many of you have watched broadcast primetime TV in the last week? Has anybody? Okay, there's one. Anybody else? Two? You have three? I was stuck on an airplane. I couldn't pass forward. Okay, so do we have four people in this room? But how many of you have watched on the devices that are now sitting in front of you? Yeah. Only two? Three? Four. Okay. And you know, the interesting thing is oftentimes there's two devices on, right? Multiple times. But the opportunity to showcase the same, you know, video, pre roll video, etc., and deliver that commercial message is, is really, really key. So. We've been able to capitalize on that. So I guess the net net, oh, I'm sorry, on this slide, what we're sharing with you is an example of how we've done that. Last year, in 2010, we launched an entire fundraising campaign on behalf of our philanthropic partner, Easter Seals, and we did it all via social media. We didn't touch a single piece of traditional media, no traditional placement whatsoever, no print, no broadcast, no radio, none of that. We did it all online, and it was our most successful 
national campaign that we've ever run on behalf of Easter Seals. Now, I want to be careful. We do have a couple brokers, um, very strong contributors to Easter Seals, who've run single campaigns for multiple years that produced more. But this was the largest, most successful national campaign that we ran on behalf of Easter Seals. Of course, it did help that we focused it on children and a little competition between agents and their children's photos, right? But it was a way to help them embrace and understand social media and help them begin to feel some of that um, emotional bond that they felt with, you know, their TV broadcast commercials. So, uh, and I think lastly on this page, I can't actually see that screen from here. I have to look at it. On my page, some other examples. You know, we've done the same thing that uh, I think you heard of a little bit earlier in terms of, you know, how do you embrace that online advertising with those third parties uh, and the visibility that they're getting with consumers. That is a portion of what we do going forward as well. But I think at this point, um, the good news is that the market has gone exactly where we predicted and thought it would go when we began to tell our system that we needed to get off TV and get online. And uh, different than, than both of you, you know, we have kind of that, that cruise liner that takes a very long time to move, very long time to move. And we're still moving, but uh, I think we are now bringing together not only the, the empirical data and results, but also the emotional bonding and commitment to the social media and the online advertising that we have had in the past with the offline advertising. I think we're ahead of schedule. Fantastic. Um, you have Twitter up there. Can you help us understand how you use Twitter and, and is it working for you? Well, um, you know, I, I was intrigued as, as these two ladies talked earlier, Christine and Carrie, about, uh, you know, the huge issue is bringing the agents with you. You know, we can run corporate campaigns. That's very different than what you really need at hyper-local to drive business. Because I don't care what you're talking about, there's nothing we're going to do from a national perspective to use Twitter that's going to bring more business into the hands of our agents. So really our focus on Twitter is very much get them in the water, get them familiar, help them see it and use it as a, a uh, marketing um, tool, not a, and not a tool to say, you know, hey, I sold a new house today, or oh, hey, guess what, I got a new listing today, kind of thing. But use it for the integration and the conversation with their sphere of influence, and use it as a part of the mobile social media strategy that our agents are using to meet customer demand. Here's a question for you. You know, the way we look at marketing here is it's a mix. It's a group of elements, and I think Chris used the term engagement channels, which is a great term. Do you look at things, do you help your agents use multiple engagement channels? Do you encourage that? Do you teach them? Do you work with them for their local market to use a multitude of channels to be effective? Yes, uh, and uh, probably there are so many multiple channels coming at us, you know, that, uh, uh, but we do. We, we, uh, try, we, we try to establish at the beginning of the year what are going to be the things that we're going to focus on this year. Uh, and, uh, you know, develop webinars, we have training, technology, uh, uh, we go out, and again, uh, I agree, I'm not going to say the word technology anymore, because it really should be online line marketing, but we do uh, that, that type of uh, training all the time. Chip, how about you folks? Well, I think we're guilty, like everyone else, focusing on just trying to run a business. I, at least for me, we, I, I put a big circle around having more meetings when I get back to to, to get the agents to get back more into uh, using some of the technologies that are out there right now. Uh, as far as specifics, for instance, I talked about brochures. Uh, we have set up things where they can go right in and it's so easy to do their own brochures with little training, uh, with, with, with the things that have been set up that uh, it's pretty, pretty easy to do the stuff, the technologies that are there from a print point of view. Okay. What's your focus uh, from, from where, where, as a CMO, social media is big. Uh, is it the mantra right now you're pushing with your crew? Because it's so, it's so cost effective, a lot of it's free, and it works. Um, we really do focus this year on mobile social media. Right. Um, although, you know, with a system the size we have, it's not going to surprise you to know that it's just, you know, you got that third, the third, and the third. Never mind productivity. Just, you know, the third, they're fully engaged and understand how to market. You know, and whatever the tool or technique, technology is, et cetera, those third, it doesn't matter what we do, they're going to be alive and active, right? So we actually, they're the ones we learn from. They're the ones whose consumers, you know, they're, they're at the top of the heap with the consumers. Right. And we've got that middle third, and that's, that's our sweet spot. Those are the ones 
anything that we can do to help them utilize tools, capabilities, marketing better. And then we got that bottom third. And you know, it doesn't matter what we do. We could hand them the closed lead and they'd still have some trouble with it, you know. So, we're, you know, our mantra is really trying to bring that middle third into um, utilizing the new technologies with their sphere of influence to meet the demand that's coming their way. Okay, go ahead, Chuck. I think there's a question over here. We'll pick some up. Have, have you, as uh, Central looked at Patch.com uh, as, as part of your local strategy? Yes, we have. What, what is Patch.com? <laughs> we are. Yes, we are. What is Patch? I don't, I don't even know. Patch.com is a, uh, it's a new uh, solely online publishing uh, company that goes out and enables very hyper-local uh, newspapers, basically, online newspapers to start. And the, the benefit is that they focus slowly with, solely within you know, micro-communities, if you will. Uh -huh. But they have a very pool of recently unemployed journalists who drive the reporting so it's a very much a traditional model that's moved online, and it offers some really unique and innovative uh, advertising opportunities. Yeah, for us, the, the huge um, focal point there is that hyper-local. Yeah. That's the huge plus. Um, Chip? Uh, yeah, I was just going to say one comment about Twitter or Facebook or whatever. I mean, I uh, my kids are all grown, but three daughters, they tend to always come back. So most of the time we have three daughters, a son-in-law, myself and my wife with the TV on in the family room. And naturally everyone's got their laptop in front of them and no conversation going on amongst each other. Um, but if you, if you went around in any given time, I think five out of six are on Facebook. Um, and it's just changed so much with the kids these days. And, and, and you're right, I, I've got to grab more of that and really focus on on, on, on the apps to make sure we're there. Everybody okay. does. Questions from the audience. Christy? Bev, I'm just curious. You cited a lot about you know, your campaigns and how you're able to track the leads that come out of a campaign. So how can you tie a lead coming out of a, you know, your, your, your baseball campaign that didn't happen? I mean, how do you tie those things together, all your different campaigns to an actual lead being generated? I'm not sure what you mean with the question about the baseball. We, we couldn't track it back then. Okay. Could not. Absolutely could not back then. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It was just far more simplistic. It was literally a, a, a paper lead, if you will, at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and we ha happened to have a promotion at the time. Actually, it preceded me. But it was a promotion where... Uh, it, it led up to it was many months in the building, and you'd and you'd get up to the home run derby, and there would be one winner who would win two hundred fifty thousand um, dollars. But in arrears, we would go back to the offices and say, "Okay, how many leads did you did you have? How many pieces of paper did you gather? How many did you capture?" Um, and in arrears, when I arrived, in arrears, we tried to do that, and um, you know it was spotty at best. <laughs> So and we, we had office after office after office that said, oh, no, because they didn't win. We threw them away. Okay, well, what happened when you contact them about a home? Oh, we, we didn't do that. <laughs> they didn't enter because they wanted to win a home. Ding, ding. I mean, because they wanted to buy a home. They wanted to win the, you know, go to the home run derby. Are you kidding me? <laughs> so so but, it was not the closed loop system, I think you were maybe indicating. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, QR codes. Does everyone know what a QR code is? A lot of hype. Hey, we hyped it at NAR. We're guilty of that. We're using a lot of print material today. In fact, I think you'll see QR codes all over the place. Tony, um, agents vary in ages and demographics. You have the third, 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 as, uh, as Bev mentioned. How are agents reacting to QR codes, and really, what's the benefit? Well, it's a link. Basically, it's a link. It's, it's nothing but a link, uh, primarily, the uh, way we teach it, online to their listing. And it's uh, through a smart smart phone uh, but I mean I, I don't understand what you mean by w w what what's the you asking like where's the beef well actually <laughs> <laughs> yes in a Canadian nice okay. kind of way yeah. no actually how are they responding to QR the question is how are they responding to QR, QR codes is it now another technology I don't want to learn this or what is this thing it's foreign oh no they, they loved it uh, what well what happened was it so many of them you know you see it you can't open a magazine today without 
uh, seeing a QR code. I mean, I, I'll, I'll uh, look at my golf magazine and, and uh, take a lesson and, and then put my smartphone to it and I'll have a video to make sure the lesson on print was the same as the one on video. And I mean, it's they're everywhere. And in fact, uh, we, we uh, had a uh, kind of a webinar where we wanted everybody to be aware of them. And uh, we started uh, getting on our uh, think tank, our innovative think tank on Facebook, all kinds of comments, particularly over Christmas, they were saying, my gosh, I went to the gallery and there was nothing but QR codes. So the first thing is awareness that this is happening, uh, that it and it's expanding, uh, you know, exponentially in Houston. The second thing is, what is it that you can do with it? Uh, well, the number one thing that I absolutely love is we can quit burning down trees and putting all these printed flyers in people's yards and put a QR code, uh, you know, in place of it and, and uh, you know, sort of reconstitute. Right. Uh, thinking green, those old uh, flyer signs, and 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 uh, now they go with a QR code, uh, but they uh, embraced it as being new. Uh, but I think uh, uh, what we found is homeowners love anything new and, and innovative, and and uh, you know if they interview you and three other people, they want the person that's looking, uh, you know, that's uh, climbed up and looked over, uh, you know, and and seen what's coming over the horizon, and they know millennials. Uh, and uh, uh, Generation X and Y are probably uh, more likely to adapt to that, and that's the person that's more likely going to buy their home. And so you've got to uh, address it with technologies that are going to be for the uh, uh, consumer that's going to buy the home, not the seller. Okay, any other comments on QR codes? I mean, I just read an article on AdAge. There was against and before, and there was strong evidence that said, wait, the market's too early, it's mm -hmm. a buzz, it's going to pass. Mm -hmm. That the might other... be true, but I've always believed I'd rather be out there uh, before it happens than to try to uh, catch the late train. Okay. That's never fun. Chip or Bev, do you have any experience with that new technology? Well, I'm I, I'm watching and, and learning right now. I'm on a couple Google groups where it's I'm just listening and reading the comments, pluses and minuses to who's having success with this, who's not. I'm hearing people like it on signs. I'm hearing people have a problem with it on signs. It's not working well as having it on your business cards and places like that. But it's it's all over the place. So I'm just sitting back and learning right now before I jump in. Okay. Um, I saw a great use of QR codes. Target. Does anyone follow Target stores? You can bypass a complete ordering process now with Target. You can go and order something with a QR code, and all your credentials are there, and it pulls you right through the shopping process instantly. Amazon's going to move there. It's really getting you through that shopping process. So Target's really taken it on. They had a lot of core products matched up with QR codes, and it was, it was pretty neat. Um, I'm going to ask this one. Do from the three of you, is there a story you have of a dynamic agent who, who's done really well with marketing that kind of stands out, an agent that's wowed you with their marketing and has made them and, and you extremely uh, uh, successful? Well, we, we have an outstanding agent that does have, again, that Ritz attitude that tries to go out of the box all the time. And uh, she does this uh, quarterly report that she uh, puts together and ties it in as a, I don't know what you call it, where we have a magazine called Ridgefield Magazine where it's attached to it. So it just, uh, and in plastic. And, and it's just a wow. I mean, it's just, and mm -hmm. I use you guys to, to print it. And it, it's just the comments she gets and the business she gets from just doing something different. I mean, she could take five pages inside the magazine, which does nothing versus this, this pullout in a plastic bag. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful piece. Bev, is there an agent that comes to mind? How sure, they market? absolutely. In a system the size that we have, um, it's interesting because Steve mentioned earlier, Pam Fertney from Century 21 Champion um, is probably a great example of a, uh, a broker um, with some great agents. And to be honest, at the end of the day, her strength is not anything that you and I will think of as new or innovative or newfangled, etc. Honest to goodness, she is just... You know, it's that, that Ritz attitude. It's, I mean, the office has a cordial, warm feeling, right? It's, and it's all about the customer. At the same time, uh, not far from her in Houston, I, you know, we have a great example. And, and in the system our size, you know, there's, there's always a great number of examples of both the hugely positive and hugely negative. But we have an example of a, um, an agent, a very strong agent, what we call a centurion agent, meaning, you know, top of the, the ladder. Um, 
And I wouldn't say she's rude by any stretch, but you wouldn't get the warm, fuzzy feeling. But let me tell you, she is using technology to market mm -hmm. like crazy. You know, she closed 50 listings in a week. It's unbelievably awesome. She communicates with her children more via technology than in person, and proudly so. Wow. Not necessarily something I would be espousing all over the place, but although let me tell you, my kids are teenagers, they have no desire to talk with me face to face. <laughs> They're happy to do the texting. But she has young children, and but she literally demonstrates how to market effectively. And she markets most effectively to the Gen Xers who are using that technology so effectively. So, you know, it's interesting because some of our best examples are um, people like Pam who aren't necessarily embracing technology, um, but they, but not that she ignores it. I don't want to say that she does because she uses it judiciously. Um, and then we have, um, you know, some of the Gen X, Gen Y, mostly Gen X um, agents that are just kicking butt with some major technology applications. Okay. Chip? Or Tonya? We that. have several uh, early adopters, and they're uh, ones that you certainly want to uh, go out into the field and see what they're doing on a regular uh, basis. And that's one of the things that we learned as, as far as QR codes. Uh, they started Facebook early. Uh, you know, they did a lot of things that uh, other agents were not adapting to soon, and we'd listen to it, and sure enough, it becomes trend. But what I'm also noticing about these uh, early adopters of, of online marketing is that that slowly by surely, uh, year by year, they're creeping up on uh, your traditional agents that have not uh, taken on uh, adopted uh, uh, online marketing. And uh, I expect that they will surpass uh, those. Basically, if you utilize it to, to uh, be more effective, more efficient in your business, and, and more creative ways to market, uh, you're going to be successful, and, and uh, you'll eventually be on top. OK. Uh, there's a question I'm going to address to Chip. I think we have five minutes left before we break for lunch. Is Chip, what is the average age of your home buyer and seller since you deal in high-end homes? And does that impact your, media, your, market, your marketing media choices? Good question. My average is still, the, <clears throat> the average age is much, much older than most, um, 40s, 45, 50. Uh, executives, you know, Fortune 100 companies and, and mainly. Uh, a lot of them don't get it. Uh, and so I, I started jumping into a lot of the social media applications, going to the boot camps, learning more and more of this. And, and I'm sitting there in my market anyways. Yes, I've got to keep going that direction. But it's still the the belly to belly, face to face, wanting me when they hire me, uh, and 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 being with people. I I will never get away from that. You know, I have just a team of two people that work for me, and if I sat there and brought in a buyer's agent in my marketplace with the quality people I deal with, and and passed it off to somebody else, and it wasn't me doing it and doing the down and dirty work, I, my business would change drastically. So I, I can't get away from that in my market. Okay, in closing comments, we're going to close here. Uh, what's the one sort of your your advice for marketing 2011 I know this session was tactical get down to best practices is there something that comes to mind starting with this new year that you would offer as insight for 2011 marketing maybe we'll start with uh, with Tony I think we need to focus on uh, smartphones uh, that drive the agents to say you may not be using it but your your consumers are in any any way that we can uh, drive uh, uh, online marketing into the and make it a really good experience through that we're going to be miles ahead okay very good uh, back to marketing, I just want to wow them every time. I want our agents to wow them where there is no second choice. And, um, you know, it's, it's funny. I sat here, and we're big on listing presentations. We, 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 we constantly are ahead of everyone else in the amount of listings. And we insist on our agents come into our offices and bring, we do a two-step, have them come in, be at our conference room, and wow them with the presentation there. I'm sitting there looking at this up here. I'm looking at the smoke. I'm looking at the quantum name there. And I swear to God, I'm, I'm doing something where they sit in that room before the agents come in and, and, and do it, we're, we're going to wow them with something with that. But, but it's, it's just to wow them each time and come up with some great marketing ideas. Okay. And finally, Bev? Gosh, I guess I would reinforce, um, Tony, um, really the mobility aspect. I think 2011 might be the first year where you could come brand new into real estate, never having sold a piece of real estate before, if you properly adopt mobile social media programs, you can outsell anybody 
who's been selling real estate for 20, 25, 30 years with huge, you know, uh, databases, et cetera. But if you m maximize the utilization of communicating to your sphere of influence, I think it can make a huge difference. Wow, well said. Thank you to our panelists, Tony, Chip, and Bev. Thank you very much.